Hi, this is John Hansen with Chris the Technician Aceto at the 2018 Tampa Pro Show. Chris, really good show today. A great show, um, great lineup everywhere. Congratulations first off to Tim Gardner for putting on such a great show. You know, I, I've been coming to the show for years, mm -hmm. like you have. You're mm -hmm. from Tampa. Well, yeah. you're a transplant from yeah. Chicago. And every year, it seems like Tim and his crew up the ante in terms of location. You know, you're right on the water here with the boats. Yeah. Um, it's a first-class hotel. Organization skills are like A+. Yeah. Yep. Huge show, and yet they run it, you know, right smack on time. So uh, without Tim Gardner, the promoter, we couldn't do a wrap-up because we'd have no show. So right. thanks, Tim. And they set a record. This was 290 pros competing this weekend. That's the most in any IFPB show ever. Yeah, it's amazing, you know, what uh, the men's classic physique, the men's... Uh, physique, you know, all these new classes yeah. that have come around in the last five years, the amount of people that they've pulled, but not only people, but quality people. I mean, the depth yeah. that you're seeing in these shows in 2018 versus 2015 yeah. is like night and day. People yeah. who could win in 15 or 14 would get slaughtered, yeah. you know, just a few years later. So it's a testament to, uh, you know, the, the, the quality of the competitors that are yeah. coming in year after year. And there's more and more pros now, so we got bigger and bigger divisions and bigger, more classes. And I think Tim is the only contest where he has every division. He has fitness, he has women's bodybuilding, he has everything. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, Tim is the type of guy uh, who supports the sport. Yeah. So, you know, he doesn't have to have every class. Yeah. But, you know, he's got a passion for the sport. Yes, he does. And yeah. he's a businessman. So, you know, the business part could be like, I'm just doing these. Yeah. Uh, but he decides to take care of everyone and have a, you know, a great outing for everyone. Well, let's start off with Classic Physique. They had about 40 competitors, so it was a huge, huge division. Yeah. And uh, your guy, Henry Pierre. Yeah, Aino. Uh, displaying an amazing physique. Really, really yeah. tall, very wide, and extremely small waist. He wins the division pretty handily, I thought. Yeah, I, th I think, like, in a, you know, Henry is somebody, like, one of these guys who's like a template for Classic. You know, yeah. I posted a picture, you know, kiddingly in, on like uh, somewhere on, on the internet and I said uh, I took this picture in 1983 because it's like a physique <laughs> that you would expect yeah. then you know he's got sweeping lats tiny waist um, deeply separated quads mm -hmm. with a you know a decent sweep but not the crazy sweep that you'd see it like obviously people in the open so yeah. um, great skin texture uh, broad looks good in all the poses I mean it was his show you know I, I thought he was like the, the you know hands down winner yeah uh, just because he typifies, I think, what people expect or what they envision when they say, you know, classic. He's yeah. truly got classic lines. Would you, yeah. you're, well, you're, you know, you're over 40 yeah. or 30, so what would you think? You've been around the sport. <laughs> when you showed me his pictures yesterday, I was trying to think of the last guy I saw who had a waist that small, and the only one I could think of was Brian Buchanan. So that's it. Brian has a different type of physique, thicker, I think, yeah. upper body, but Henry looked great bigger, much bigger in person than he did in your pictures. He's got that tiny waist, but he's a big man. He's like really tall and he really dominated the division, I thought. And his legs, like you said, I agree. They had that crazy separation. They weren't super big, but yeah. really perfect for classic physique. Yeah, no, I agree. And, uh, you know, he's off to, to the Olympia in six weeks. Yeah. So second place was uh, Keon Pearson. Yep. Keon Pearson is a, a young guy, a uh, short guy. Um, that stacks up well against anyone in the classic division because he's got round muscle bellies. I'm sure he's heard that to the nth degree. He's got, you know, a vacuum which is doesn't define you as being classic. Just because you can do a vacuum right. doesn't mean you've got a classic lines. But he's got nice lines, nice shape. Um, I think here, you know, he ran up against someone much taller, yeah, which much is taller. an advantage. Um, and in better condition, too, as well. But I thought he looked great. Um, he could have been a touch sharper, maybe. That's nitpicking. Mm -hmm. um, but I, he's someone, I think he might be qualified for the Olympia. And if he's not, uh, he's somebody in the future who will be in the mix for a, a good slot. I remember seeing him, actually, I, uh, I think it was at the Olympia this past year, Some one of the pro shows, and I was hugely impressed okay. because he looks good, really, from every angle. And that's part of... You know, that's part of bodybuilding to look good from every angle. But I think in classic, too, you really have to look, you know, like you have flow from every yeah. angle. Yeah, he's got a very thick physique, real good legs, and he does have that vacuum. And like you said, he was showing that off a lot. Yeah, so um, if he's not qualified for the Olympia, uh, you know, I'm sure he'll get there soon. And, and if he is, which I actually think he is, um, you know, 
anything can happen at that show because what's interesting about classic is everyone looks a little bit different. Mm -hmm. You know, you got like a Henry who's tall and he's short. Um, you know, Bumstead's tall. Yeah. You, you, you've got the, the bull guy who's you know brutally muscular for that yeah, class. Sure. Um, you know, so Reagan Grimes, Arash Rabat, everyone has totally different. Yeah. You know, Breon, the winner. Yeah. You know, what I mean, yeah. everyone has totally different lines and things that are unique to them. So it's, it's kind of sort of a little bit hard to judge because people are so different looking. Yeah. Speaking of that, how do you think Henry would stack up against some of the taller guys in classic, like uh, Chris Bumstead and also uh, the new guy, Wesley Vissers? Um, I, I think he'll send, you know, I, I think he's going to do well because yeah. I, I think it's, you know, it, the height works to an advantage. Mm -hmm. I think at that show, I thought like Chris Bumstead last year, I, I would, you know, the height and the width, but the height was like really, you know, made a mark in terms of your eye going towards, you know, at least the initial eye. Of course, yeah. you know, he's in condition, he's complete and everything yeah, else. And he used to be a bodybuilder. Yeah. Those are important. But I think height matters. Absolutely. And, you know, yeah. and, and by definition, if you have like Keon in the middle next to Bumstead tall, Henry tall, you know, he, he's either the winner, which he's not. Yeah. Or he looks like something's a little bit off, yeah. you know. Gonna get pushed to push to the side, I think. Yeah, yeah I agree. And uh, third place goes to Jason Lowe, who is a client of yours, and he's a Florida guy, so I've seen him before. I've done some videos with him. A real thick physique, uh, kind of reminds me. And you know, I don't know if you agree with this, but his physique always sort of reminded me of Franco Santoriello. He had that kind of thickness, the round, yeah, the rugged, round muscle bellies. But this time he was in the best condition I've ever seen him. Yeah, he was in tremendous condition. You know, he's been holding that condition. He did the Arnold, mm -hmm. and he's been pounding shows after shows, trying to win a show to get to the Olympia. Yeah. Um, and I've been telling him since, like, day one is, you know, you're going to find a show where you can win. This wasn't yeah. one of them. Yeah. But he's, there's been shows that he did not do. I mean, you can't do every show. Yeah. But there's been shows where he didn't do, for example, he was very capable of, of winning, like minus, you know, so... Uh, you know, here in a crazy stacked lineup, yeah. uh, he came guys. in at his best, yeah. you know, he's been dieting forever, ends up in third place, and I mean, there's nothing to be, you know, hold your head low, yeah. you know, on a third place finish in a class like this, and I, I think that, um, as Jose Raymond says, I love to quote you, Jose, you know, this class is made for you in terms of, you know, he's he lacks weaknesses, he mm -hmm. lacks weaknesses, and he's got brings very strong to tremendous condition. So by definition, just those attributes, lacking weaknesses yeah. and having great condition, you're going to always be in the hardcore mix of three to five, and then you're going to pick a show where you're going to win. Yeah, I think he was overjoyed to place third. Yeah, and uh, his posing was better also. Yeah, I thought his posing was uh, improved over what I've seen in the past. And, yeah. you know, it, uh, you know, he's new, new like a lot of guys, but mm -hmm. new to the stage. So, you know, the more times you get on stage, the, the, the more relaxed you are. Yeah. Okay, fourth place we had Damian Patrick. What can you say about him, Chris? Damian Patrick was uh, had classic lines, classic shape, and was very hard and muscular. I think that the, the three people ahead of him had better, quote, classic lines or better V-taper, mm -hmm. and that negated his great condition to, like, you couldn't put him higher than fourth place in that yeah. lineup. Yeah. And since he had classic, you know, flow and lines and shape like that, you know, so... It, it automatically put him in like the mix, the top six, and his condition was, would have typically pushed him higher, but you know, you have three guys with more classic lines before him. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and I think that's what just kept him in the fourth slot. And then fifth was Cleveland Thomas, a name from the past. I remember him, uh, I think he was competing in the team universe yeah. for many years. So uh, he takes the top, uh, top five. Yeah, Cleveland looked very good. Um, and I thought he looked like a bodybuilder. And it's hard to explain. You know, someone asked me, what is classic? I said, I know it when I see it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he, you know, he, he's a classic bodybuilder. You know, he has classic lines. But there's still like a, like a little power edge to his physique. Yeah. You know, which, you know, you could never say Henry has a powerful physique. No. Mm -hmm. You could never say Kiona has a powerful physique. You, you, you would... You'd, you'd sit on the word physique more than powerful. And I yeah. think that's what happens in, you know, his cases. Uh, although he looked good and just, you know, deserved to be up there where he plays, you know, he has like a power element to him that, you know, I, I think like it, from, if I was judging, I would say, okay, you know, he's not going to place higher than here. Yeah. At least in this show. Yeah. 
All right, now we go to the 212 division, and uh, a guy with a lot of hype lately, Nicholas Villaludo, I think is from Switzerland. Yeah. He comes in and he we'll wins a... Nicholas B, so we don't botch his name. Yeah, right. Huh? He wins the first spot. Uh, he gets first place, uh, displaying an amazingly massive physique, uh, super big legs, super big arms, yeah. uh, really freaky looking, uh, kind of like a Lee Priest type of physique, sort of. I was just going to say, he reminds yeah. me like of a Lee Priest... Um, but the downside is it reminds me of a Lee, Lee Priest. In other words, you know, um, he, tremendous amount of muscle, tremendous amount of density, very, very good condition. But he's already looks like almost too big for the frame, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, and that's not to pick the winner and say this is what's wrong with him. He's the winner, um, and des deservingly so. But I think that, you know, running into the Olympia, there's people who open up more on their poses, yeah. you know, especially the back poses. I mean, he needs a thicker back, and I'm sure that will come at some point. Um, but there's something a little bit, like, bunched up about his physique, Absolutely, which yeah. makes him in the lineup very vulnerable. Um, but when he gets into the shots, of course, side chest is fantastic. Side tricep, most muscular, back lat spread. Uh, even the front double bicep, yeah. you know, is, is very good. So he packs a ton of muscle. I mean... This was a slam dunk, I thought, to, in a in a large degree for him. Just if you know, because you got to weigh muscle, yeah, right, as yeah. bodybuilding and, and two twelve yeah. division, especially. And he had a ton of it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I was looking at his uh, pictures of his physique after uh, the contest was over. He's got very short legs, long torso, which, and I, I agree with you. His back is his big weak point, and maybe because of the long torso, that's a big reason why. Yeah, I mean, uh, a, a long torso with shorter legs th throws off. Yeah. You know, to some weird degree, balance. And I think in my mind, I always think elite priests like that. Crazy giant arms, crazy giant legs. Yeah. It has everything. The only knock is the torso is a little bit long. Yeah. It's just a structure, and there's really nothing he can do about yeah, that. But, exactly. but he does pack an amazing amount of uh, muscle onto his frame. So second place goes to Derek Oslin. Uh, Derek Oslin's got nice, like, round muscle, um, good flow, um, lack of weaknesses. But I think if you weigh condition, it was odd this, to, to me that some people I thought were conditioned, namely Mike Ergus and Lloyd Dollar, yeah. uh, who were in tremendous, especially Mike Ergus, I thought he was, had, was in tremendous condition, fell to sixth and seventh, and yet they got to be scratching their head and thinking, okay, the guy who got second, while looks good, you know, didn't have the level of conditioning yeah. that they have. Um, that's it. How old is Mike Ergus now? He, I remember him from the Mike USA Ergus. 15 years ago. Yeah, so uh, Mike's got to be at the youngest mid-40s, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, but he looked tremendous. Mm -hmm. He looked tremendous up there. Uh, so he's got to be, you know, frustrated. I would be frustrated if I was him, yeah. not knowing, like, how do I place higher in a show like this. So going back to Derek, um, I think he's got a, you know, good uh, structure and a good, you know, future in the 212. Uh, it's just that you know he needs to add like density and 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 condition i think it's more like density you know than it is like condition you know mm -hmm. i mean his body fat is low um but i think you know sometimes you can have the same level of body fat as someone else but if they have a denser look yeah. it looks way harder under the lights oh yeah absolutely and that's just a matter of training right and and yeah, yeah training and years. Years. Yeah. yeah third place in the 212 goes to oswaldo oswaldo gonzalez yeah and so here's a guy rewarded on condition. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that, but it's like at some parts of prejudging, I thought he looked thin in the upper body. Mm -hmm. And I would have definitely rewarded him as well on condition, but um, I thought at, at points, like, like a lot of prejudging, I, I just thought is like, you know, I was impressed with the condition, but the fullness, or even it's not even fullness, it's just like size in the upper body was like a little off. And, you know, he looked a little bottom heavy, a little. And he's a little thin through the, you know, the structure in the, in the shoulders. So, okay. um, again, I don't want to harp on it, but I am harping on it. Lloyd Dollar and Mike Ergus, I thought, were, you know, easily comparative to number two and three. Fourth goes to Kareth Bajo, another guy in really great condition. Yeah, oh, that was uh, Dave Palumbo's guy. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I thought he was um, a mass monster. Mm -hmm. And I, I personally would have liked to see him in better condition to, to highlight that mass. I mean, he's freaky big, crazy, crazy legs. Okay. And this is the oddness of the judging, right? I mean, so what do you do with him? Like, crazy mass. One of the thickest guys, if not, you know, next to Nicholas. Yeah. Um, but nowhere near the level of condition of Nicholas and nowhere near the condition of the guy who got 
third and, you know, say third place. Right, right. So it's uh, an apples and orange type show. <laughs> right. Yeah, the top six were, or top five were apples and oranges. Exactly. And then uh, fifth place was Fernando de Alameda. Yeah, Fernando has been around for a long time. Um, low body fat here, you know, very good condition. I just thought he was flat. I've mm -hmm. seen him fuller. Um, but, you know, when you, when you chase condition, you know, nobody can chase condition. And it's very hard to chase condition and stay full. Yeah. So I've seen him bigger or fuller. Um, so I think, you know, that's, that's like a personal decision he always is probably making recently yeah. is, you know, do I come in as hard as I possibly can and give up some size or do I try to come in, you know, hard enough and, and, and big enough. He's probably looking at the guys ahead of him saying, wait a minute, because he was harder than the guy in fourth yeah. for sure and harder than the guy in second. But for his own physique, he looked a little flat through the pecs, which hurt his front lat spread and, uh, and being like flat through the upper back, it hurt his front it hurt his front double as well. Okay. So, um, but that's, you know, that's, that's how the contests go. You have to decide on how you're going to come in, hard or full, or, you know, yeah. be, be nice just to come in big, full, and hard all the time. Right, right. If you, Once you get that down. To do that, if you figure it out, let me know. Yeah. All right, so now we go into the men's open. Now, this was one of the most exciting uh, men's open bodybuilding contests I've seen in years, yeah. yeah. Uh, we had a real battle between uh, Sergio Oliva Jr. and Alexis Rivera from Puerto Rico. They had a big battle at the pre-judging, and then they carried that over to tonight. Another big battle, yeah. Uh, yeah, great battle, and a great ovation from the crowd. This is what bodybuilding should be, right, Chris? This is, this is like, you know, if you, obviously people listening on the internet aren't here, but I haven't been to a bodybuilding contest where people have cheered like this yeah. in years. Yeah. And um, I think here, coming out of pre-judging, I had Sergio, interesting, the first call out, they had four people in the top four, and I had Sergio Oliva um, not clearly winning, but for sure winning. Mm -hmm. um, and then they called those, uh, Sergio, uh, who ends up second, and Alexis, who wins, the last call out of prejudging together. Yeah. And I thought, well, that was quick. The guy who got uh, Alexis seemed to really tighten up quickly in prejudging. And I thought, well, maybe, you know, was his nerves, you know, because when he first yeah. was in the first call out, he was hard for sure. Um, but just not really popping. And then that last call out, it seemed like he closed the gap. But for sure, I thought that, um, in my mind, Sergio was winning. Come back tonight, and they, the, you know, I thought that Alexis was tighter than this morning mm -hmm. and actually had a fuller look than this morning. His color was definitely better than this morning. Okay. And they compared uh, those two like we haven't seen people being compared in years. Steve was holding the poses for so Forever. long. It, it seemed like a posing clinic. Yeah. And that not only after that, it just run them through it again. Yeah. And you could feel the genuineness of we're not sure. Yeah. At that point, you could feel that that was a lot of times when they call two people out at the end, it's a show. Yeah. They know who's going to win. They know who's second. It could be a blow. You know, it's close, mm -hmm. but let's compare them, you know, put on, you know, put on a show, whatever. You could feel when they kept on calling them and kept on calling them we're not sure. Yeah. And that's why the and and that is exactly why the audience went nuts. Yeah. Because they could feel yeah. the same thing. Um, and there were shots at the end, I think that Alexis won, and there were shots that Sergio won, mostly the same shots they both equally won in prejudging. Mm -hmm. Um and you could flip a coin with them. Yeah. You know? I thought Alexis had tremendous legs. Yeah, and tremendous quads up or striated quads yeah huge quads and striated quads especially at night yeah you know uh his quads look even more detailed tonight yeah and sergio's legs are a strong point yeah and i thought sergio was a little bit better from the back and back and sergio's back was kind of his weak point before yeah but i thought he really brought that up i thought he definitely had him in the rear double and back, uh, back lat spread i thought he had him in the back lat spread yeah, too. Yeah. too yeah how about front double front lat spread Front double, I had Sergio also. I thought um, Alexis was harder in the most muscular, yeah. especially in the abdominal region. You could see his abs were, were harder. And uh, he just, like, I think he looked harder overall in the most muscular. You know. front last spread. Um, probably Sergio, because he's got those high lats. So this. Here's my point. That, and that's my point. How about side chest? Uh, about equal. Okay, side tricep. Okay, the point is. Side that tricep, I think Sergio. Sergio hits a pose better. The oddness of it is that I would agree with you, and yet I would agree with the idea that you can flip a coin. Mm -hmm. So I help Sergio. I have him winning more poses than Alexis, but at the same time, 
this is bodybuilding. You can certainly leave there. And I mean, there's, it's, Alexis quads were so detailed yeah. that you could say like, okay, you don't judge a bodybuilding show like we just did necessarily, like who wins each pose. Yeah. You know, sometimes you're left with first impression, last impression. Um, so although I had Sergio winning lots of poses, um, Alexis looked tremendous and competitive and, and, and to his credit and Sergio's credit, nobody gave up on that, that no, last, yeah. No. And, and when it's close like that, it's usually the guy that has a little more charisma, a little brings a little more stage presence. Oh, well, that's Sergio all the way, for sure. You still can't knock Alexis. Where Alexis looks a little more reserved. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Alexis was hard as a rock, so, I mean, he, either one. I mean, you can't, yeah. you can't fault the judges on that. I mean, it was so close. I just thought Sergio with his, you know, ex, extroverted uh, manner on stage, I thought he was going to pull it off. Yeah, so, I mean, they both look great. Congratulations, Alexis. Uh, yeah. Dynamite showing. Uh, dynamite consistency to come from where he was second in Vancouver a few weeks ago to yeah. you know hang in there, which yeah. is always hard, and do a, uh, another show. It shows you like you know his dedication to the sport. Third place was Max Charles. Max Charles was Max in third at the end. Let's double check our notes. Yeah. Yes. Max Charles was third place. Um, lots of mass. Uh, you know. You can dissect this in, in two poses, back last spread, back double, yeah. meaning um, the level of condition that he had there. And it's always been his Achilles heel. Sometimes he brings it in, sometimes yeah. he doesn't bring it in. He's won the show previously. He's won the show a couple of years ago, yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I think the, you know, Alexis was just so hard and from, from the back. And Sergio was extremely hard in the back. And that's yeah. from, you know, glutes, hams, back, upper back, arm details. And I think that's what automatically put Max immediately out of the running for the yeah. top two. Yeah, yeah, it was a two-man show for sure. And if uh, Max would have came in hard like he did a few years ago, you know, he could have been up in the mix too. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Fourth was... Justin Rodriguez. Justin Rodriguez um, continues to, like, impress and improve. Um, you know, I, it, it's odd. I don't think he's, like, y you know, worse here because I hear people saying, you know, oh, he, he looks off here. Um, he's done a lot of shows this year, hasn't he? He's done a lot of shows, but you know he hasn't run up to like against Sergio and Alexis yeah. at their at their at their best. Right. So, um, you know, and, and and it's always who you're standing next to, mm -hmm. and that's as simple as that. I yeah. mean, you can look tremendous, but if you look if you're standing next to someone who's you know at not necessarily another level, but definitely you know who breached that level of conditioning for a show like this, then right. sometimes you look. You, you know, you, you look flat or you, people say, oh, you're flat or, oh, you're not hard enough because they don't know but because really you're just being compared to, to a really like, harder guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> harder couple guys. Yeah. And then fifth was the Russian Sergei Kulikov, I think yes. his name was? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought he was better uh, three weeks uh, in Chicago. Mm -hmm. When he did Chicago, he was round, full, hard. Here he was hard um, and lost some of the roundness okay. that he had there three weeks ago. So... I, th I think that knocked him out. Um, yeah. I think had he been in the level of condition that he had in Chicago and the level of fullness, then he probably would have, uh, you know, been more competitive, you know, for, for that third slot. Yeah. We got to talk about six. Rashid Olaker, yeah. uh, some of the thickest, gnarliest muscle right, I've seen since right Ronnie right. Coleman. Yeah. Well, I think he was letting his stomach hang out. I noticed that, and uh, I think he did, could just be a, just a little harder. You know. Could be a little harder. I think. I think the, the the weird knock against him, I guess, if you're going to make a knock, is he could be harder. Um, but his muscle is so thick and dense, he, he doesn't look soft at all. No, no. Um, you know, I'm not spitting out the answer because I don't know it. Yeah. I can justify the idea that he's got Nicholas, the, the 212 winner syndrome, which is a lot of muscle packed on a smaller frame. Mm -hmm. And it... It doesn't quite look broad enough. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's not wide, yeah. but he's super thick. Yeah, so it's almost like he needs more width yeah. for that amount of mass. Right, right. Um, but, he, but out of all the people who probably got to be frustrated, you know, he's going to go and look at pictures and say, I was bigger than this guy, and I was harder than this guy. Much bigger. <laughs> and which is true, um, which really technically could have allowed him, I think, I, you know, you could argue him placing... As high as third place, yeah. mm -hmm. as high as high as third place, um, and that's about it, you yeah. know. And one thing I noticed about him, uh, he moves very well. 
Did you notice during his transitions, he's, he'd come up oh, on yeah, his toes yeah, and he'd yeah. slide doing one pose and the next? He's flexible. Yeah, right. Uh, For a big guy like that, that was... He's got a power physique, and I don't think he's going to be moving down to classic, so Henry no. and uh, Briona... They got nothing to worry yeah, about. Yeah, they got nothing to worry about. <laughs> and An Win was also in really good condition. Yeah, An Win um, is somebody who's, you know, hot and cold. Yeah. Um, he looked re good at this show last year. Uh, he looked good at a recent show. He's a little off here, even though he was in, he was in good condition. I think he was in better condition. Yeah, I shouldn't say he was in good condition. What impressed me was he was much bigger than I've ever wow. seen him, and he and he's yeah. got a great physique. Yeah. You know, he's he just says he's a dial it in. Yeah, he's got to dial it in. Isn't that a yeah. catch word? <laughs> dial it in. Um, that's a, that's yeah. a millennial phrase. Yeah, he's he's somebody who can you know walk into a show like this and be competitive for the top five any day of the week, maybe top four, top three, yeah, four, three, four, five, somewhere. It's just a matter of balancing out that new mass mm -hmm. with condition. Yeah, yeah. But overall, a great show. Uh, that pose down between Sergio Jr. and uh, Alexa Cervera was really one to be seen. Yeah, it was tremendous. And lastly, I just want to um, congratulate uh, Flex Wheeler. Yeah, for the Lifetime Achievement of Ben Wheeler Lifetime Achievement Award. Yeah, they gave a, they gave a great video presentation. Yeah, it, it was, was a great video. Look of his physique when they showed, like, the videos of it, right? Yeah, it's like, wow, where are, the, where are those physiques at now? I mean... Go Google Flex Wheeler yeah. images, yeah. and you see some astound. They had some astounding video of Gold's training. Yeah. Just everything: pecs, yeah. shoulders, triceps, biceps. And the one thing I noticed was he had the thickness. He obviously has an incredible shape, but just that sharp, sharp detail that yeah, you just yeah, yeah, don't yeah. see that much today. No, you don't see it. <laughs> Got to dial it yeah. in. The striations on the quads, yeah, the and just the the small waist with those dialed in abs. You know the ripped abs. Wow, yeah. it's unbelievable physique. He, he's phenomenal. I saw him after and congratulated him, and yeah, he's 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 uh, inspired a lot of people both yeah. with what he's you know accomplished in bodybuilding. But you know he's, he's had the disease and you know come yeah. back from that and all these things. And yeah, he's when they started talking about that, I thought about that, and he did in the car crash and all yeah. that stuff. You had to go through. Yeah, yeah so that's why you need the bodybuilding hall of fame, Dave. You got to get. We got to get from Flex like the the seatbelt or whatever, <laughs> right, right, the seatbelt right. that he wore or didn't wear. No, right. he did wear it. Yeah, he did. And Otherwise, the, he would have been dead. Bodybuilding Hall of Fame. So when we go and we see the Bodybuilding Hall of Fame, we can see yeah. Flex Will. This is the car crash. Right. This is the seatbelt from the car crash. Of the hood or something. Even if we just like take a seatbelt from like a Dodge Neon and <laughs> right. nobody will know. Make it dirty. Nobody will know. <laughs> All right. Well, for Chris Aceto and John Hansen, we are at the Tampa Pro 2018 Fantastic Show. Tim Gardner for RxMuscle.com.